Are you ready to say goodbye to the constant ups and downs of the artist income roller coaster? Whether you're a full-time artist who wants to increase and stabilize your income, a part-time musician who wants to go full-time, or a hobbyist who needs to fund your passion projects, this podcast will equip you with the tools, resources, and inspiration to make it happen. My name is Bree Noble. I'm a musician, best-selling author, and educator whose mission is to help musicians like you to increase the income you're already making and tap into new income streams so you can create a more diverse, stable, reliable income from music and finally ditch the starving artist mentality. Now let's dive into the Profitable Musician Show. I am so excited to be here today with Emily Satterly from Itty Ditty. This is a really cool um, startup service, a really helpful tool for musicians that I can't wait to unpack. Uh, Before we get into what Itty Ditty does, I just want to find out kind of the origin story of why you started it, how you got started, and why did you choose to start this? Like, what is your music experience and background? Yeah, so first and foremost, I'm a singer-songwriter. Now I'm in my mid-30s, but all throughout my 20s, I was uh, playing out live in bars and coffee shops throughout Southern California and working with music producers to produce my songs in Orange County and LA. And um, I had been through, I have been through the gamut of experiences with that, um, with working with producers and had a lot of difficult difficulties with it. And I wanted to um, fix it. I started the, so I would work with producers who I just felt like weren't a good match for my songs. And, um, And then I'd work with really professional producers and pay a ton of money and still be disappointed. And I was just kind of like, what's going on here? And sometimes I'd have great experiences. So I really became like fascinated with like, what makes a good producer match and how to make, how could that be easier? Um, So I did a number of like, kind of like startups before Itty Ditty, which was, I had, um, I had the biggest meetup in Southern California called Orange County Songwriters. Um, Oh, wow. When did you have that? I used to live in Orange County. Oh, nice. Um, that was, man, I don't know, 10 years ago, I guess we started it or maybe like 12 years ago and it ran, it's still active, but I don't run it anymore. That's like, right. Well, let's see. When did I move? I actually moved from Orange County in 2004. So I definitely missed it, but, um, I actually recorded my first album in Orange County too. So that's interesting. And how did you find your producer there? Or how did you do it? Well, yeah, I, I found my producer because he actually asked to wanted to publish one of my songs. And then he asked me to be like to record a demo for one of his songs because he liked my voice. And then he's like, Oh my gosh, you need to create an album. And he was willing to produce it for free. So that's how I ended up with that. And I basically ended up with the studio that he worked with before. Um, So I was putting a lot of stock in, hoping that he had the knowledge to do this because I really didn't, I felt totally out of my depth. Yeah. Oh, totally. I mean, that's exactly the experience I had in the beginning. It's like you walk into that environment and it's intimidating and you don't know. And often the producer's like in the producer chair and you're like kind of on the side. And in my case, one of the first producers I worked with, it was like, I was told to sit on the floor, What? <laughs> like, completely, you know, put in my place as like, I'm just the songwriter and they know what's going on and they're in charge. Um, Yeah. So the Orange County songwriters thing was really to educate um, songwriters on how the process works, working with the producer and then to match them um, with producers in their area that that could be good for them. Um, And then I did a similar thing with like a label later on in LA. Uh, I was like more artist development focused and more serious. I mean, we were, I was kind of the legal liaison there, like really making sure I had to learn a lot about the contracts and make sure everyone was protected. I went to school for music business. Um, So that's all the stuff I was doing in my twenties. And then um, after all of that, it was just, I kind of had this idea for providing this support at scale for a, a long time before I actually did it. But um, in 2016 is when I started Itty Ditty and kind of transferred this whole guidance and support of walking songwriters through the production process and matching them with producers. Um, I started doing that at scale online. 
Mm, okay. So, and I love that you started this because you had this pain point. So you really knew what it was like to experience these issues with producers and also to have experienced good experiences with producers and try to kind of like extract from those, what is it that makes a good artist producer match, which is basically what you guys are doing. I mean, they're kind of like a match.com for artists and producers, right? But you also have all these other services that go along with it. Yeah, that's a great way to explain it. Um, sometimes we say, yeah, we're like the bumble for music production, or, um, but it's more than that. Yeah, it's not just like swiping right. Um, we, it's like you can, you, you can kind of swipe right. We can talk about a little bit more in depth about how it works, how you get matched. But after that, there's all of this, it's like a program of like, uh, here are the steps that go into it. And, um, and, and here's how to make sure you're going to get what you want at the end of it. You're like in the power seat. Whereas, yeah, before in those experiences I had, a lot of times I felt not in control. And especially like for first timers who just don't know what to do, they're kind of at the mercy of a producer. And, and the downside of that is if, if you're not um, set up for success, you're not going to get the song that you want. Yeah. And so before we get into like the particulars, because I do want to unpack like artist development and stuff like that, but how did you get the the courage and the funds to start Itty Ditty? Because I always find these origin stories really interesting, especially for female entrepreneurs. Hmm. When I started, I definitely didn't call um, Itty Ditty or myself a startup. You know, I didn't know that that's what I was doing. I was kind of had the benefit of being naive. I mean, I had done these other projects. Looking back, you know, I was always an entrepreneur. It was like, oh, I'm struggling with songwriting. How about I create a big meetup and group to help me and help other people with that. And, oh, let's make a label. I mean, those were entrepreneurial pursuits, but I didn't really realize it at the time. So I guess going into starting what is now, you know, hopefully going to be this really um, new innovative technology that can disrupt the whole market. You know, I didn't know that at the time I was just like, it was this natural progression of like, I'm going to take this online and make what I already do available to a lot of people. Um, I just asked around. I was in Fort Collins, Colorado at the time. So it was like a smaller town in, in Colorado. I didn't know if I'd have to go back to LA to do it. And I was asking around um, if anybody could, you know, knew a developer, knew how to help me with it. And they were like, you should go to Startup Week and you should start learning how to pitch this to investors and how to build a business model. And uh, so I started doing all of those things and and little by little, I mean, yeah, definitely. I almost know more about the startup world and the technology world now than I do about the music world, which is like where I came from. That's funny. Wow. Um, yeah, that's, yeah, it's a different way of doing things for sure than like just getting, you know, like me, like just starting and putting a little thing out there and then building and building. Did you actually get any um, like startup capital? We have had one angel investor mm. and um, that's actually been a blessing, I think, because we didn't get a ton of funding early on. We had to just figure it out ourselves. And as much as I had all this experience in the real world of like, I knew intimately like the problems that songwriters have. And I knew, you know, what goes into making a good producer match. Um, doing it online was a bit different and we had to figure out, I mean, yeah, it was a lot different. Like how do you collaborate remotely and how do you collaborate online so that it's efficient and effective? And uh, yeah, we had to, we had to really get nitty and in, in, down and dirty and nitty and gritty to figure that out. And sometimes when you get funding too quickly, you'll build out this robust solution. That's not actually what people need. That is so such a good point. Yes. I think the bootstrapping actually makes you not go too far ahead. And, yeah. and like you said, build something that's actually not solving their problem. You think it's going to solve their problem, but as you get into it and you get some customers, you're like, oh no, like this is the way we need to help them. So that's, I, that's really smart. So what I love about this is that it also includes an element of artist development because I've heard from a lot of people and I experienced this a bit um, that if you you find a producer and for me it was just like oh this dude's willing to produce me for free and he's like excited about my music like that was as far as I got as far as deciding who I was going to work with I didn't really make a decision you know I just fell into it um, and then what happens sometimes is that they have a different vision for you as an artist than you do I know a friend of mine 
she got this producer that was like given to her by this investor that was behind what she was doing in her first album. And this producer had this whole different vibe that he had in mind for her. She was going to be like this alternative, like Sarah McLaughlin style, uh, 90s style artist. But that was not what her heart was in. Her heart was in being more of like an acoustic folk singer songwriter style. And so her first album came out and she's like, yeah, these are my songs, but these are not really in the way that I envisioned them and they're not representing me as the kind of artist that I want to be. Um, so is that, how does Itty Diddy solve that problem? Oh my gosh. Yes. I mean, that is like when we sat down to think about like, what is Itty Diddy going to do? It was like exactly that. Like, this is not, I mean, it could make you a star. It could, it, you know, this could help elevate your career and take you to that level of, you know, commercial success. But really like at the heart of it, we were like, we want the, the whole point of using it Diddy is once your song is complete because of the artist development process you went through. And then because you work with the right producer, it's your music is going to be authentic to you. Like mm. that's the whole point. And it's going to feel <laughs> like whatever message you're trying to convey, it worked because it's the worst feeling when it, when it doesn't kind of work out that way. And you're like, you kind of put a lot of, you can put time and money and in, in working on a song. And it's like, this isn't me. This isn't what I, what, what I was looking for. And that's like the worst. Um, and yeah, the artists, speaking of like uh, bootstrapping, that was one big thing that we learned was that we wanted, it wasn't just going to be matchmaking. It was going to be a lot of this artist development up front because when you work with producers, they also are, producers are also looking to work with artists who kind of know who they are a little bit more and have figured themselves out. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times that can take a lot of years to do. And we think that we've um, really refined a process that can help streamline that for artists. Um, so that's, you know, one of the things you want to, you want to think about when you're developing your own unique sound is you, you want to think about your own unique blend of influences and what artists and songwriters have inspired you. Um, and, but, what, but what's tricky about that is like, say you like, um, you really like Billie Eilish, but you also really like Sheryl Crow. And those are kind of two different sounds. And it's like, well, how do you combine those two to create something of your own? And so that is something that our technology helps artists flush out. Mm, that, is, that is really, really cool. And what I also love about it is that it is, is that empowering nature of the fact that it's more of a collaboration versus, you know, you're just letting this producer like have full reign over what you're doing. And the, and the way that you come together as like being matched, you're more on the level with them and that like, and, and with your development, you, you've empowered yourself to be like, this is who I am as an artist. Now I want to find somebody that fits well with that instead of letting someone just mold me into something that I don't even know that I want to be. So that is really, really good. Um, before we get into like the super specifics of, of what you can do on Itty Ditty, I just wanted to mention um, you did a survey in our group, uh, the female indie musician community, to kind of get a, a gauge of what people's experiences were with producers. And I'd love to hear some of the results that came out of that because I think they were really interesting. They were really interesting. You know, I was at surprised because people were really engaged with it. Like there was a ton of responses. Um, and that, so the question, we did a couple of them and the questions were around, you know, tell, have you been disempowered? Have you felt disempowered when working with producers? Or have you had a disappointing or a horrible experience when collaborating with producers? Um, and yeah, it got a ton of responses. I think to me that said like, you know, this is something that songwriters have dealt with and they haven't had an outlet or a place to talk about it. Um, but yeah, 80% of songwriters said they felt disempowered or that they weren't taken seriously when collaborating with producers. And 75% of songwriters said they had a poor or, or a disappointing experience. 40% said they had like a nightmare experience or a horrible experience working with producers. Um, and then there was like, a, there was a lot of comments too. I mean, it was a poll, but people felt like they wanted to tell their stories in the comments. So a lot of the comments were, you know, they, the producer ignored their input. Um, the, they, you know, they were dealing with inexperienced producers. They weren't heard or respected creatively. Um, they were taken advantage of financially. 
Um, and then being the women said that, you know, that a lot of times they get hit on or they get unwanted romantic advances, uh, in those environments. So it was like, I had that experience too. So yeah, it it happens. Oh yeah, definitely. I, when we do sales calls with artists, I mean, we hear every, um, you know, time I get to talk to an artist about their song and whether this is something that they, you know, they're ready for production and they want to do it. It's never just sales call. It's a story. It's a conversation. It's always like a story of like something that happened to them, um, which has been kind of a healing experience for me because I had, I've had all these experiences. And for a long time, I thought I was the only one, Mm. you know, now I realize that's not the case at all. Oh, I love that. I love that. You just said, it's not a sales call. It's like a, a story, you know, you're really understanding what they've been through. And so those you know, that's a big portion of who you serve, but I know you also serve the people that like would have been me in the beginning where I wrote these songs. I have no idea how to arrange. I don't know anyone in the business. Like, and I have songwriters reach out to me a lot and they're like, I don't even know where to start. I don't know where to find a producer. I don't um, know anyone. I don't even know anyone to ask. (laughs) And I also don't even, I don't have a clear vision of how to take my song from it's like raw form into being produced. So are you finding that those people are coming to you as well? Yeah. I I mean, we're great for people who who are kind of like rebounders, you know, they're coming back after a negative experience, but we're really good for first timers because the whole process is guided. It's supportive. You know, you don't have to know what you're doing. Basically we have, it's a rubric that you follow that's step-by-step step. you get a production assistant too. So there's someone from itty ditty that works side by side with you the whole time. Um, so there, yeah, there's a lot of advantages to doing it through itty ditty, especially if you're a first timer. Mm-hmm. Mm, that's really, really cool. Okay. So let's talk about producers. Cause we all, we hear the term producer and we're like, I think I need one of those, but I don't know exactly what they do, but I feel like I need one because you know, when I, when I look at the Grammys and, and there's like a category for this best producer, So I probably need one of those if I'm going to be like on the level with the people I want to be on the level with. But then sometimes we just look for like whether they've won awards or whether they've produced artists that we like. Like, how do we figure out what a producer does for us and and what we should be looking for in a producer? And of course, like what you do now is like solving a lot of these problems because it's going to your system is going to help us find the right person, but like, let's just say they're not using your system. Yeah. What uh, we get that question a lot. Sure. Like what is, what even is music production and what does music producer do? And that's, it's a great question because it's changed so much over the years. Um, What the role of a producer is, has changed since like the label days. Hmm. I mean, now you're talking about a whole different world where producers are really independent contractors and working out of their bedroom studios or their home studios. So Um, The definition has changed, so it's certainly a valid question. Um, A production is like, so when you hear a song on the radio or on Spotify and uh, maybe it's got, so like in uh, the case of like Sheryl Crow, you know, she's kind of got like a full band of instruments playing and the producer is the person who um, either has contributed to playing those instruments or has orchestrated it. So they've hired out instrument instrumentalists to help play on that track. Um, and then there's effects. So that's the first thing. The second thing a producer does is apply effects and um, alterations to those instruments and those sounds. And that's a process called mixing. And then the final thing is that the producer brings up um, brings those sounds, those instruments up to industry standard by using things like EQ and compression so that the song is going to play at the right volume and it's going to sound professional through speakers and, and headphones. So let me ask though, it, that is a lot describing what I think of as an engineer. So how is that different? So yeah, so sometimes a producer will use an engineer for some of those things. Sometimes they won't do it all themselves, although it's becoming more and more common that mm-hmm. a producer kind of is like this all-in-one um, that all, that does the mixing engine, mixing engineering and, or the mix engineering and the production. But production itself and, and more of the traditional role is, is kind of that first part where they're 
they have this artistry producers are certainly artists too and they're hearing what instruments are coming in and what sounds are coming in so they're bringing it from a bare bones of like just the songwriter and their guitar to adding keys adding strings adding percussion and bass um, in a tasteful way and then the a big part of being a producer is and being you know in all you could say this in a lot of different mediums of art but it's taking away so when you're going through the process at first, a lot of times you're adding things or the producer is adding things. Um, and then at the end, a good producer kind of knows what to take away and keep it, um, just keep the necessary elements in place. Oh, that's an interesting um, idea about what to take away. I never thought about that because sometimes maybe you just like overload the track and that's oh, not helping. It's a huge thing. Yeah, a lot of producers um, that we talk to, you know, say that that's the, big sign of an amateur producer is someone who's overproduced it because, you know, they just say like a big part of being professional is knowing just to keep anything that's essential and take everything else out. And really when you listen to, if you list, actually listen to your favorite song over and over and what's going on, it might, you might think there is a lot going on at first when it's like a pop song on the radio, but if you really listen to it, you're only going to hear a few elements. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, are, is there a role also to like on the vocal side or even on the instrumental part side, like deciding, okay, that's a good take, or we need to retake this part. Cause I remember my producer doing that. And I always was like, well, how do I know? Like, what if I don't like the take, but he likes it. And then we move on. And then I go back later and go, I just don't like the way my voice sounded there. Mm. They should be including you. A good producer has, you know, an ear for, you know, if you're singing in tune or if you did something that, you know, had a really great emotional quality to it, they're, they're listening for that and they should be able to pinpoint it, but also they should be passing it by you. Um, producers work in different ways, but they should never just be hearing everything themselves and deciding. Um, there, there should be like a collaborative element. Yeah. Cool. I agree. I agree. Um, yeah. Okay. So how does Itty Ditty work? Like if I come to the site, like how does my experience flow? Yeah. So the first step is the artist development, um, the discovering your sound process that we talked a little bit about earlier. So there's three steps, essentially. The first one is, is this, um, it's like a program to develop your sound. We're going to um, take a look at who your influences are and give you a blueprint of what is gonna work for your song. Um, so that's like what instruments, what genres, what um, which production effects and techniques um, would likely work for this song. So just a place to start and like a North Star of the production. So that's the first step. The second step is, is the matching with producers. So we post your demo, like a, a home or a phone recording of your song along with this blueprint and um, producers who are interested in you pitch to you essentially. So you get requests from producers, you browse producer profiles if you like them. The key here is if you like them, you get to ask for a sketch. Mm -hmm. So you get to actually hear a rough draft of what each producer could actually do with your song. Um, and then from those sketches, you basically kind of swipe right and you choose and hire your favorite producer. And then the third and the last step is, is collaborating with your favorite producer. And that's when you get the production assistant. Um, the key here is this, this, this part is guided, this step-by-step -step, um, program that you have to go back and forth and, and refine your song until it's perfect. That is just so cool. I mean, it reminds me of when I was creating one of my logos and I used 99 designs and I was like, I love this where they pitch to me and they give me all these options. Um, and I can be like, okay, I like this one, but I don't want to make a little changes or whatever. Um, but just having that versus just going off of like their experience or their awards or whatever, like you can actually see how they interact with your music, which I think is so valuable. Totally. Because there are a lot of things that you can do to, that you can look for to kind of improve your chances of finding the right producer. But at the end of the day, that sketch process is really going to help you get clear on that and uh, just reduce a lot of the risk because it's a, it can be a big guessing game. You can do everything you can do to try to figure out who's going to be best for you. But until you start working with that producer and actually hear if they're in alignment, you really don't know. So that's what the, that 
that matchmaking process is all about. Yeah, absolutely. So I know we're going to be doing a workshop to show people in my audience how this works, like with one of your producers and like the difference that a producer can make on a track, which is going to be super exciting. So I just want to throw that link out there, profitablemusician.com slash production, um, that we'll be having that workshop. And then after it's live, it will be available for people to watch it in the future. Um, but is there anything else we haven't discussed about Eddie Diddy that you want to make sure people know? Um, I guess, you know, the, I don't know if I want to say anything about Eddie Diddy, but about producing your songs and, and protecting yourself as a songwriter. Um, I just think it's important to remember that you are the artist, you are the songwriter, it is your song. And, you know, you have every right to take it seriously and evaluate all your options. Um, and, and Itty Ditty is going to help you, uh, help you do that. And you're going to leave with a higher, higher level of confidence and the pride in the music you created. You're going to get a song that sounds like you. I love that. And that actually reminds me um, a thing that comes up all the time uh, that I talk about in my Rock Your Next Release program and other artists that come to me and ask me questions is the legal side. So, you know, do you help them get contracts in place so they make sure that they retain all the rights to their master and that, you know, these are all work for hire, your producer and the instrumentalists? I love, I'm glad you said that because that's a huge um, benefit, totally. So you're protected on Itty Ditty. We have built-in contracts. A lot of the time and money that we spent as a startup and as a company was inside these terms of service that we have that act as a contract. And it protects your copyright and it protects you and that you're going to always retain 100% of your ownership and of your master recording. So that's beautiful because you don't have to, this, that happened to me, by the way, you know, I was mm -hmm. working with a producer and after the fact, he, you know, kind of th threw it on me that he wanted to own half of the songwriting royalties and what? Half of the master and, um, and uh, yeah, so I, that was, a, and then I, you know, I didn't want to do that because he didn't write any of the songs. And so nothing ever happened with those songs. You know, I kind of lost, he, he threatened me and, you know, didn't want me to use those songs anymore. So I've heard those stories over and over. Oh, me too. It was a huge priority for us to protect artists in that way. Um, so you don't have, have anything to worry about with uh, using Itty Ditty. Yeah, that is so good because if you are putting your song out there and like getting um, producers to give you sketches, that would be a worry. Like, well, couldn't they just go take this song and, and you know, produce it and, you know, have another artist record it or whatever. So that fact that you have that in place is so key. Yeah. And the fact that you're working online with them through this platform and with our members, I mean, everything's just so secure. If they did end up trying to go do something with your song, I mean, you could you could pinpoint it back to the exact moment that they had access to your song and you're all working under these terms that say what their repercussions are too. So it gives you uh, the step-by-step -step guide of if that did happen exactly how you could uh, go after that producer to have them immediately, you know, take down your song. Yeah. You basically have a digital paper trail, which is exactly. amazing. And you have another company involved that's making sure that that digital paper trail is there. So yep. you are protected. Oh, so, so, so smart. Okay, so I, I'm so excited to introduce my audience to Itty Ditty and everything that you guys have available. We've got this masterclass that we're doing with your producer. Uh, it's going to be at profitablemusician.com slash production. Uh, and it will be available after the fact there as well for people to watch after it is live. So um, thank you so much, Emily. I'm so glad that we met that we are working together as partners here because I know that your company can help so many artists that are in my community. I'm yeah excited to meet your community and thank you for uh, giving us this platform, Brie. We really, we really appreciate it. Thanks for listening to The Profitable Musician Show. I would love to know your takeaways and aha moments from this episode. Leave me a comment over at ProfitableMusician.com so I can bring you more of the information, interviews, and resources that you love. Thanks to Rondi Fay, one of my Academy members, for providing the music for our podcast. You can check her out at rondifay.com. That's R-A-N-D-I-F-A-Y.com. 
just remember, knowledge is power, but without implementation, it is useless. And inspiration without action is merely entertainment. But I know you're not just a dreamer, you are a doer. And I promise I'll be here every week to support you and remind you that you can be a profitable musician.